The next logical step generally is to look at how DevOps can manage that process. And we can do it iteratively where we look at um, a methodology to use code to do the same things that you would do as you click around in the console. And that process by which you check in code to a repository and what you checked in then goes through a pipeline enabling it to be checked against policy and then implement it. That now gives us the things that we're missing, which is the who, what, when, where, and even sometimes why, and the auditability and traceability of, of the permissions being set and who set them. Today, we'll be talking about Google Cloud permissions, managing that via uh, infrastructure as code. So Han, policy as code um, is, is, is really a, a concept that's tough to get your hands around sometimes. So it, it could even be at the top of an organization, the GCP organization itself, and how you manage things as they permissions as they trickle down. Um, can you describe a little bit about how that process works? Well, traditionally, I think, um... A lot of people just kind of experiment in the cloud first as they get uh, familiar with the idea of using cloud and they go into the consoles and start clicking around and look at permissioning users individually um, or permissioning uh, things around in Google's cloud, at least folders and projects by clicking in the console to easily stand up those kinds of resources. Um, and I think this is where people get trapped because they, they, they think that this is easy and they continue that process without thinking about the additional aspects that affect governance, like the separation of duty, auditability, compliance, and SecOps. Yeah, so it gets to be hard when you don't know where you're going to go, right? From day one at GCP, you want to maybe stand up a VM or something and, and kind of see the environment. And eventually you have um, a large chunk of your business that, that runs there. How, how do you go about? So, so I started pointing and clicking throughout the UI and I saw uh, there's a big bunch of chaos there at the top level of IAM. And so then what's my next step then? I need to try to like tighten that up and control it more, right? For sure. I think that the next logical step generally is to look at how DevOps can manage that process. And we can do it iteratively where we look at um, a methodology to use code to do the same things that you would do as you click around in the console. And that process by which you check in code to a repository and what you checked in then goes through a pipeline, enabling it to be checked against policy and then implement it. That now gives us the things that we're missing, which is the who, what, when, where, and even sometimes why, and the auditability and traceability of, of the permissions being set and who set them. Oh, cool. So like, just like when I release my code through a pipeline, I could have various steps that happen um, besides just hooking up GCP to a, a Git repo and having a provision directly from there, you're saying, right? We could have different different approval steps or, or whatever. Yeah, and I think just like you're saying, if we look at development and code, the same thing applies directly to infrastructure. I mean, infrastructure as code kind of implies like it's equivalent to any other type of code, policy as code, application code. And in the other areas, aside from infrastructure, there is um, linting, checking, um, you know, things that test the code prior to it being implemented so that we know ahead of time before it's out in the wild that I give, I've given too many permissions or too broad of permissions. And that's what helps us to begin controlling um, the wild west of just throwing users up one by one. Yeah, cool. Then I'd have like versioning too. Right, so I, I maybe not I am at the top of the org, but there'd be plenty of times where my infrastructure change broke something and I want to back it up. Right, and I think that that's the key because if you do it by someone clicking around, you can't go back to who did it exactly 
and what exactly was done. There's no history of that. And so you lose the ability then to fix or, or quickly identify what the problem is so that you can fix it. Quick is the key word there, right? I mean, you can go back through your audit logs and see Han made this change, but it's very tough to see what the what the rest of the state of everything was at that time, unlike unlike a commit through a Git repo. Right, and I think that that is the key because if you have collaboration going on and there's more than one person running this thing, there has to be a mechanism that we can see the contributions, changes, and requests that come in. And as you said, checking that into a repo gives us that information. Thanks for watching. Let us know what security issues are important to you. 